Welcome to Screen Slurps, the movie review podcast where we discuss everything that is good, bad, and savage in the world of cinema. I'm Adam Meisner. I'm Dash Gearhart. And folks, please welcome our guest for today's episode, Roshan Pujari. How are you doing, Roshan? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? All is well. All is that's well. Right. All, all is, is well. well. Yeah. Thank that's God right. we're saying all that's- is well. <laughs> because we are reviewing the Amir Khan film Three Idiots Today from 2009. And uh, before we get into that, Roshan, for those who don't know about you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your, I don't know, interest in movies? Like what what sparked you to uh, get into movies and, or really just watch them, be an aficionado to movies? And what's your favorite thing to eat? Okay. Uh, well, that's a lot of interesting questions. Um, so, uh, Feel free a little to not bit, answer any of them. Uh, a little, I, okay, fine. No, I'm not answering. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so, I guess a little bit. I'll start with a little bit about myself. Um, so, I grew up in uh, a city called Bombay. Now it's called Mumbai, India. Uh, I was born and raised there, and you know, I I completed my graduation in in Mumbai and. Uh, I worked there for a couple of years, and then at some point I came for came to the U.S. for grad school, and and now I'm in Chicago, and, and, and I'm mostly in the tech sector, but I'm you know I'm, I'm in like product management and things like that. With regards to movies, I, I want to say like movies is like a universal thing. It's like a universal form of entertainment. Like no matter what part of the world you are, I, I don't think you're going to find people not interested in movies, and uh, especially coming from India, which is known to be one of the largest or the largest, uh, I guess, movie industry um, overall, even compared to Hollywood. Uh, th- there was obviously a lot of buzz around movies. And just growing up, we watched a lot of Bollywood movies. We, we obviously watched Hollywood movies too, but it was like um, a sort of a mix. Like you you know, you watch a couple of Hollywood movies at a time and then you want a break and then you would get into Bollywood. And you watch a couple of those, and you want to break, you move, switch back to Hollywood. So it was, it was that for for the most part. And after I moved uh, to the states, I've, I've tried to uh, sort of keep in touch with Bollywood. Uh, I haven't been very good at it, but with all uh, you know services like Netflix and things like that, it's it's really easy to get access to any of the uh, Indian movies. So so yeah, I I, I think um, I wasn't really a a huge movie buff but I, I think just the fact that you're in the middle of like you know it, and Bombay is like the the heart of Bollywood and you know people are always talking about celebrities and actors and things like that so like you step out of the door and people talk about movies there's movie theaters everywhere so it is really hard to ignore movies as, as a form of entertainment so I, I didn't consider myself a movie buff, but at the same time, you know, uh, just living there, it's like, there's no way you're going to avoid it. So, and, and, and I guess going over to your second question about what I like to eat, I like to eat a lot of things. Um, and um, I guess my favorite food, I would say, I would say um, I, I like, you know, I, I like pizza and I mean, it's, it's always been a thing like, you know, you have standard pizzas and we ate pizzas in India, but uh, after I moved to States, I think that's really when I realized like the kinds of things you can do with pizza, uh, clearly they're not healthy for you, but uh, <laughs> they're delicious. So this, I mean, especially in Chicago, there's like all kinds of pizzas you get in this. Um, for a long time, I thought I knew a lot about pizzas, but then there was Pequot, I had never heard of it. And it uh, turns out it's like one of the biggest things in in Chicago, uh, there's obviously deep dish and there's all kinds of deep dish uh, pizzas. So, um, yeah, it's it's like my comfort food. So, we'll never say no to pizza. That's great. You know, it's fascinating to hear you talk about the impact of the film industry in India and the impact of Bollywood films in India because... 
I believe Dash and I were just talking about Dev Patel's performance and the personal history of David Copperfield on last week's episode. And I don't think a lot of uh, American um, people really know the impact of Bollywood films because the first film I think that would come to a lot of American minds would be Slumdog Millionaire, uh, coincidentally enough, another Deb Patel film. But I think it's a little bit funny that there's just, there's just not a lot of thought around Bollywood cinema when it really has such a huge impact on um you know, the, the Indian culture. And that's one of the things that I really wanted to talk to you about, Rashawn, is that there's so many movies out there, yet here I sit and I know of very few of them. And that's one of the reasons I was so excited to talk about Three Idiots today, because I can already say after watching this film, this has got to be one of the best movies I have ever seen in my life. This was a fantastic film after watching this. And I don't think Amir Khan gets enough recognition in the United States because that dude is like the Tom Hanks of Indian actors. That man has been in movies of all different genres and he is a fantastic performer, especially for this film being a comedy after the last movie that we reviewed with him in it was, uh, Dangal. Yeah. And uh, completely opposite genre. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been, I've had a, um, since we did, we done two Amir Khan. Well, now this, uh, uh, would make it two Amir Khan films. I am now uh, becoming a big Amir Khan fan. I want to watch more Amir Khan films. Yeah, I actually had three recommendations, and the other two were also Amir Khan movies. Uh, it was Tari Zumi Per, which is uh, also translated to English as Stars on Earth. Uh, and it, and movies he makes are really deal with like critical issues in the society. And and he also has a really artistic way of. Uh, making those movies that end, end up becoming really popular. So, and and there, and there was Lagan, which is uh, which is the other movie I'd recommended, which is uh, which was nominated for uh, Oscars. Like, I believe it was two thousand. Yeah, he is fantastic, and I feel like we just begun our Amir Khan journey. And so with that, I'll say before, and I'll probably say at the end, uh, thank you for joining us for this episode, Roshan. And like we do every week, I pesker, pesky, pesky, I pester Adam <laughs> with this question, which is, what has he been slurping this past week? And by that, I mean, what has Adam been watching, reading, playing, or maybe making besides watching our movie this week, which is Three Idiots? And after... Adam answers. I would like you to answer the same question, Roshan. So, Adam, would you uh, start us off here, please? Always pestering. You know, I can never get you off my back. <laughs> Pesker, pesty, pesty, like a... pestering. P- pesto, pasta, pesky. It's like a termite infestation. You just never get rid of it. Um, you know, I'm not going to lie, though. It, it hasn't been too crazy for me in terms of the things I've been doing because it's been crazy in another way. And that craziness has been a giant snowstorm that's been happening in the city of Chicago Ooh. and the entire country, for that matter. Uh, I'm very curious to know what the snowstorm is going like in Texas right now because I'm trying to keep up with the news and it's been pretty bad. So I'm very curious to see how that's going to light up um just it's it's just my my thoughts are out there for the listeners who are a part of that snowstorm and i hope it does get a little bit easier but yes the snowstorm has been crazy and i've been trying to make my way through it as i look out the windows and see feet of snow just hiding my car outside as that goes on i've been playing league of legends like i'm in high school all over again and playing as my main character a cat with flaming bombs named Ziggs and just the craziest thing I swear it's, a, it's like a cat on drugs he's just <laughs> he just runs around throwing bombs at people it sounds just like that for real and he just chucks bombs at people it's fun it's a great time and I love playing against other people online and yeah playing as a cat throwing bombs at people and I do believe I said the term MOBA last week and I didn't quite define it but I will define it now it stands for multiplayer online battle arena games for anyone who's curious out there 
Uh, and I also got very sucked into watching Secret Life of the American Teenager. Again, I feel like I'm back in high school all over again. When I was like 15 years old, I think I was watching Secret Life of the American Teenager. And that's something the typical high school man was doing. I don't think they were sitting at home watching Shailene Woodley become a pregnant teenager. She didn't actually become pregnant, by the way. This is all a fictional television series. But yeah, that's that's kind of what I was doing on Netflix, I think. But yeah, I'm watching it all over again. I'm going to try try and actually finish the series now and see what actually happens but that show is just a teenage drama all over again and it's it just sucks you in so many so many different problems and who knows i'll start watching the oc after i finish this one because please watch more of the oc yeah, i love the oc because you love it and because peter gallagher is a fantastic actor Ah, Peter Gallagher. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's pretty much my jam right now, and we'll see we'll see what takes me next. Excellent, Roshan. What have you been slurping this past week besides three idiots? Well, uh, I live in Chicago, so yes, uh, a lot of snow. Uh, <laughs> it's, snow. It's just slurping snow. Just just go outside and just like, I, well, um, it's 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 crazy. Like you know, I've, I've lived in the states for about five six years now and um i have experienced cold and i was around for the polar vortex that was like two years ago which was not a lot of snow it was it was really cold and windy uh, but this time around it's apparently it, it is cold it's in the negative but it's it's not as cold as it was like two years ago but it's just a lot of snow and um i, I you know I, I used to live downtown and now i'm in in a ukrainian village which is a neighborhood and i get to witness what people do with their cars uh, right right on the street and it's just it's just a lot of entertainment um i get up in the morning and i see um i see this dude try to clear out snow from his car and it's like a huge pile of snow right next to the car which is probably larger than the car <laughs> and he realizes he can't move the car anymore because the car is surrounded by snow and he just gives up and just goes back and that's just like pure entertainment i'm just like i feel so bad for people but um but it's just i guess a privilege that i don't have to leave my apartment and just stay inside in terms of what, what i've been doing outside of work work has been taking most of my time but outside of that uh we uh my fiance and i we started uh, this tv show called newsroom which is an old old tv show uh, i think it was came around uh 10 years ago and speaking of dave patel uh dave patel is pretty good i did not know he i actually did not know he was in that show um, and we just started it, and I was like, "Well, he isn't. He isn't here." So it's it's an amazing show. I, I really like it. We ended up um, getting to season two pretty quickly. It's got three seasons, and it's it's very interesting. There's a lot of um, there's a conversation of politics and how you know divided U.S. can be. Which at that point in time, I didn't really think it was. But now, living in 2020 and 2021, you see what's going on. And you just reflect back and think about what the makers of the show were thinking. It's just like, you guys like hit, hit the target. Like you knew what was going to happen. So um, for anyone who hasn't watched the show, I would definitely recommend it. It's, it's very, it's really interesting. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, not, that's been mostly what, I, what I've been up to. Cool. Nice. Excellent. Thank you, Rashawn. Uh, some things I've been slurping this past week. I have been continuing reading my Eberron source book for uh, D and D, play Dungeons and Dragons, preparing to campaign a new campaign. Um, it's going to be an actual play D and D stream pretty soon on Twitch. Um, it's titled Journey Punks. So been prepping for that. I also been keeping up with Servant on Apple TV Plus. Uh, there is new episodes every Friday at the time of this recording. It's really cool. Uh, the executive producer is M. Night Shyamalan, and it also has Ron Weasley in it. Rupert Grint plays one of the four main characters. So it's really cool to see him play just something besides Ron Weasley and also an American. He plays a Philadelphia sort of finance 
douchey kind of guy, but it's he's very likable. It's good to know that Ron Weasley's a douche, isn't it? <laughs> no, he, I I believe Mr. Rupert Grant's a good man. I don't know. Who knows? I don't. I don't know. I just like Ron. I really enjoy his performance because he's a he's a flawed character. I should say he's definitely the comic relief in that show because it's very dark and scary, and mysterious, and you know it's. I mean, it's M Night Shyamalan, you know, and you know what you're in for already just by that name. And he is sort of the person that provides levity and is sort of like the what the fuck is going on here type of person, you know. And so it is really enjoyable to see him in it. He's funny. He has an American accent. He is really grouchy a lot. He drinks a ton. And yeah, he's always drinking every I think oh. every scene he's always he's always got a drink in his hand. It's after all that spell casting he did with Harry <laughs> yeah. Potter. Now he's just really let himself go. Yep. He's always in a suit and he always he's always drinking in the, in the show or eating something. So, oh, yeah, it's it's really good. He's great. He's really good in it. Um, I've also been OK, so. Right, real quick, I revisited uh, This is the End, a 2013 film written and directed by Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen. Uh, it's a comedy, has a bunch of actors like James Franco, Seth Rogen, and Craig Thompson, Danny McBride, and you know, a bunch of them. It's Jonah Hill, uh, Jay Baruchel, I think that's how I was saying him. They're all playing themselves. It's the end of the world. It's it's funny. It's kind of like a good mix between like comedy and horror, almost kind of like that Ghostbusters mix, uh, but rated R. Anyway, besides that, I finally finished Neon Genesis Evangelion and the ending movie End of Evangelion. And, and how did they compare? Well, it's not really a comparison. It's End of Evangelion is this hour long special that is the conclusion to the TV show Neon Genesis Evangelion. It's an animated came out in the 90s and it is fucking crazy. It is so nuts. I, I I can't even go into it too much, um, but I do know I heard that at the end of the TV show at Neon Genesis Evangelion that the creator, like the director, the creative director, Ano, he received death threats for the film. People were so displeased with it. And I will say for myself that the end of the show is very monumental it's almost experimental it works as like almost like its own thing like this half hour episode it's almost like this really cool experimental psychiatric uh like uh psychology session that is about learning to love yourself and not be so self-deprecating and if you have hate for yourself you end up projecting it on others and learning that yeah, why would you, you write death threats to the, the director for that then it, it's but it works really well as its own self-contained thing, but it has nothing to do with the rest of the show, which is basically giant robots versus monsters. Like it's a kaiju <laughs> show, basically. It has nothing to do with the rest of it. And it is like, what? I like this, but this has nothing to do with the rest of this. Anyway, I'm not justifying him getting death threats. That's terrible. It's just an anime. Why would you death threat somebody over anything, let alone anime? I love anime, but anyway, I'm not going to death threat anybody over it. Anyway, so they made an uh, a ending movie. Like, no, 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 here's the real ending. So then they made this ending, which starts off as like, oh, you know, robots, you know, uh, giant monster fights, kaiju, you know, let's get them. And, you know, oh, man, terrorists are attacking us. Is it the terrorists or is it U.S.? I don't know, but they're attacking Tokyo 3 and fight them off. Holy crap. Oh, and boy. then it goes into this whole crazy sequence about the idea of transitioning humankind from individuals into one singular being and this this end all sort of beginning and end which they symbolize as Adam by the way there's a lot of religious symbolism in this it sounds like a Adam, lot of drugs were used in the making and, of the show it really seems like it and the ending uh with the omega which is like lilith i believe and it's it's so crazy what what okay so Besides all the craziness, which I can handle all the crazy imagery and stuff, and animation-wise, it's very beautiful. It just, it makes, it. it's almost nonsensical. Maybe I need to watch it one more time to sort of, like, really digest it better. Uh, one thing I definitely do not like is that there's a lot of sexual symbolism in it, which I'm like, cool, fine, you know, like... 
it, we're all human. You know, it's 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 fine. It's art. But what I don't like is that the vehicles that they use for this sexual symbolism are 14 and 15 year old characters. Now, granted, mm. I know it's animated, but it's like this is definitely not made for kids. It's definitely not made for teenagers. This is like rated R stuff. And well, that's always the argument kids, a lot of the time, too, is the fine. big argument is like, you know, anime is made for kids. So only kids should watch anime. This is definitely this is very it's it's gory. It's it's lots of sexual stuff. I mean, the show starts off with Shinji. He accidentally sees his friend's boobs and he jerks off to her. Like, oh, it, boy. it literally starts off that way. And it's like, OK, oh, my God. Here we go. This is already nuts. Uh, I can only imagine what's next. It gets way more bonkers than that, too, even though that's just like, OK, whatever. Weird. Well, um, and, how, and how is anime made for kids when Cartoon Network also dedicated like the evening late night anime for well, adult you know, swim. adults? It, it, yeah, it, it said right on. It adult was the swim, creation of adult swim. Of <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so what, what I when I what I would go back and be like, oh, no, change this. This isn't right. It's like do all your crazy stuff. Do all your you know, weird scenes with people jerking off to people. I don't know, jerking off people, whatever, whatever you want to do, Ano. Just please have adults star in this. You know, like have adult have have your characters be at least eighteen years old. You know, at the very least, be adults doing it, and and you're viewing all this crazy sexual type stuff. That that's it. I just don't like. I don't like the the kids being the the center of all this madness. And that's what makes that's what made me feel really uncomfortable by it. And that's what makes me think like I don't even know if I want to go back and watch it because it, it's so it's disturbing. It's it's really disturbing. A lot of people revere it as some of the best anime ever. I don't know about myself. I love anime. I especially love, as Adam knows, Dragon Ball Z. Um, and uh, <laughs> I love all that series. Um, no judgment to those who do enjoy Neon Genesis Evangelion. I can only imagine going through watching that while you're um, having a hard time as a teenager watching it. Maybe, I mean, I've watched, I watched Radar stuff when I was a teenager. You know, I'd snuck by my parents and watched, you know, stuff I shouldn't have at the moment. But you know what? I mean, kids think about that stuff. I just don't like it that people can go back to it as adults and I fear that they could uh, assume some authority over that and I don't know. I just don't I just don't want kids to be harmed. I just don't that's all I'm trying to say. I don't want kids to be harmed, basically. I think, I think that's a fair thing to Yeah, have. very yeah, fair. That's it. Be do all your crazy stuff, but do it with uh do all your crazy animation, but do it with adults. Um anyway. Uh it, it, it just reminded reminded me of uh I remember when I was a kid, my my older brother he used to watch uh, South Park, and I, I didn't really get why he didn't let me watch South Park. And I was like, "Well, that's just cartoon. Let me watch it." And he was like, "This is not for you." Um, and I, you know, we didn't have really good access to South Park, like wherever. I think he just got a CD or whatever back then, and and. You know, now that I watch it, I'm like, I know why you said no. <laughs> like, this, this thing's crazy. <laughs> like, they had a uh, they had an episode for coronavirus, and it was oh. it was crazy. That the dude goes the pandemic and, special. Yeah, he literally goes and like fucks a bat, like literally, and yep. they show it. <laughs> what? what? Him and Mickey Mouse what do it, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. like, what the hell? Yep. It's fucking nuts. It's definitely not for kids. It's definitely not for kids. It's definitely not for kids. Oh, it's boy. probably not even for like sane adults. I know, right? <laughs> like to a point I'm like, I don't I like the song that it started off with. That was fun. Afterwards, I'm like, I don't think I like watching this. <laughs> like Integrity Farms. <laughs> yeah. Well, with that, now that we got all that out of our system, let's move on to our review of Three Idiots. Yes. Uh, that's right. Three it's a idiots definition of movie. us. <laughs> the three right. Idiots. Woo! All right is well. All three is well. Idiots is a 2009 Indian Hindi language coming of age comedy drama film directed by, um, and please correct me if I'm mispronouncing this, uh, Raj Kumar Hirani. You got it right. And also, thank you. And also co-written by him with, uh, I'm sorry, Ab Hijat Joshi. Uh, Ab Hijat Joshi. Thank you. Yes, it's it's uh, based on a book by uh, by an, a, a very popular author in India. I believe the name of the book was Five Point Someone, which was a very popular book. 
Uh, and five point someone was, I think, a reference to the grades, like five point something or five point someone. Um, and the movie was based off of that book. Excellent. I did not know that. And the film stars Amir Khan, our our man Amir Khan, our new favorite, our Mad Haven. Who, uh, Rashawn, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't he go by just Mad Haven now? Our I, Mad Haven. He played uh, Farhan, one, yes, uh, so, one of the friends. Oh, 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 oh I see. Oh, uh, it's pronounced. I, I'm so sorry to correct you, but please it, correct it, me, please, please. I want to. I want to do this right. <laughs> uh, it, it's Madawan. Okay, so, great. Um, and and so yes, he's a he's also a very popular actor, but he he comes from the south, and um, the south of India has several different languages, just like you know, in different parts of India, have several different languages. But the southern uh, the movie industry is pretty popular, and they they make a lot of movies. Um, and he he was an actor in one of the southern movie industries, and finally made his way to Bollywood at some point. But I, I think he's, def- he's definitely more popular in the South. And Great. This is probably one of his bigger breaks. Is one of the languages that's popular, is it Tamil? Tamil, yes. Tamil, considered, I guess, the world's oldest language. Uh, cool. And that's, yeah, I think he was, I want to say he was in, in the Tamil movie industry. Mm. Cool. Uh, and it also uh, stars uh, Charmin, Sh- Charman. Uh, Char- Joshi? Charmin. Charmin. Charmin Joshi. Uh, Karina Kapoor. Karina Kapoor, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's from the Kapoor family, which is one of the largest and the oldest uh, families in Bollywood. Um, I think she's like for fifth generation. Oh, uh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Bollywood royalty. Yeah. And so, Boman Irani? Boman Irani, yes. Boman Irani is uh, also a very popular actor. I think he's known for mostly theater. But he's a really good actor. He's a very, very, very talented actor. I yes, they, I believe everybody was really fantastic in this. Um, and also, I have lost my list, uh, but at least Omi Vai Vaidya. Omi Vaidya, yes. He. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen The Office. I'm a very big fan of The yes, Office. Yes, yes. Uh, so he he was in The Office, um, and that's how I should the silencer. Ended. Uh, yeah, he was uh, <laughs> he was the IT guy in like, I think season one or season two. He wore a turban, um, so that that's how I knew the actor. And I was like, yeah, I've seen The Office, and I know this guy. And so when I saw him in Three Idiots, I'm like, this face is familiar. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> he is great. Well, the film follows the friendship of three students at an Indian engineering college and is a satire about the social pressures under an Indian education system. The film is narrated through parallel dramas. One is in the present and the other 10 years in the past. And uh, yeah, it was directed by, like I said, Raj, Rajkumar Hirani. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, if you have the um, INDB for this, please continue. I don't want to <laughs> butcher these names anymore. I, I apologize to everybody for this. No, I, I, I think you got it right. Great. No. And right. it was written by uh, Jot Joshi and Rajkumar Hirani. And it is, like you said, based off of five points. Uh, five points someone, right? Yes. Excellent. And cinematography was done by C.K. Uh, is it Merle? I'm uh, sorry. Merle Gleed Haran. Merle Daran, I'm guessing. I, I, I don't know the name at the top of my head. I'm going to have to look it up, but I, I, I think it's Merle Daran. Awesome. And it was released on December 25th, 2009 in India. And the uh, budget for it was 550 million uh, rubies, right? Or rupees. 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 Yeah. Rupees. Um, do you guys ever notice that Legend of Zelda uses rupees as well? Rupees? Yeah. Uh, that's their currency. And I wonder if that's uh, they borrowed that from India. I wondered. Um, but at the box office, it uh, made 4.60 billion rupees. Uh, so that's definitely a lot more than 550 million. Um, that's for excellent. sure. So this was my first time watching this. Um, this is not my, as we said earlier, it was not my first time watching Amir Khan in a film, and I was already blown away by how great he was in Dongle. Um, that was just a, such an exciting um, coming of age uh, sports movie. Uh, I think I told Adam this before. I don't really enjoy sports other than uh, 
like MMA and boxing, like combat sports. Um, but I really like sports movies. <laughs> and I really uh, care about the people in sports movies a lot of times. Uh, and he was he was fantastic. Granted, he was he was very intimidating in that to me. Um, you know, his very strict father uh, figure. And but you can also see his like very emotional um, weight that was inside of him. This he was completely different and was so he was great in dongle and he was so great in this he was so lively and full of energy and life and charisma and he was just like this like you know just this like sun the star shining uh with everybody and it was so great to see him be in this kind of role um uh rashan was this your first time watching it have you seen this movie before yeah, yeah, I did. I was I was in India when the movie released. And Excellent. It was, what was it like? Uh, Tell us about that. Oh, it, it was definitely one of the most anticipated movies back then. One because the book was already very popular, and there was you know there was talk about Amir Khan, and Amir Khan by that point was uh, was a superstar. He is a superstar, but even by that point, he he started acting in like the eighties, and he was quite popular in the nineties. But really, it was mid two thousands. Is really. Uh, when he really took off and he started making like one movie in like two or three years and that would be a lot of work he would put in all his energy in those two three years and you know develop this this masterpiece so people were really really waiting for that movie so i know there was a lot of buzz a lot of excitement uh so yeah i did i did go to a movie theater with my family and we we watched three idiots um so it was definitely not my first time watching this, um, and, I, and I watched it again uh, with my fiance because, you know, we, we started watching Bollywood movies, and this was obviously one of the recommendations I had. So I think this was, yeah, this was my third time watching it. Excellent, excellent. That's great. Adam, what was your experience watching this? Well, this was the first time I watched this movie, and uh, watching this movie, I, I knew going into it, it was going to be a little bit longer because <laughs> you know of all the recommendations that Rashawn had I looked at the runtime on this and I find it I find it a little bit humorous that most Bollywood films uh, have a very long runtime is there a particular reason Rashawn you would know why Bollywood movies have a longer runtime or I would assume I, that you you have an idea why Bollywood movies have a longer runtime than than most other films I have I have a reason. I don't know if it is the right reason, but I remember uh, as a kid when we would, you know, figure out what movies to watch, uh, and you know, there'd be a movie that'd be like two hours, and my parents would be like, "Well, that's only two hours. That's not worth our money. <laughs> uh, it, has to, it has to be three hours. <laughs> so why why are we spending like hundred rupees on this movie? We gotta. It's got to be more than that." Um, but, but I, I guess joke, j- jokes aside, but you know, I, I think for the most part, uh, there's a, Bollywood movies are considered like musicals, but they're not really musicals. They have music aspects in them. They have songs in them, and that's really how uh, you know song is like music is really popular in India. You don't you find very few artists who are like making solo albums like like you find in the states. Uh, it's it's mostly um, artists getting popular through movies, uh, and it's always been a thing. It's from the beginning of when the movies were made in the whatever twenties or thirties or whenever the movies started in India. Um, they they always did that. They always had songs and music as part of part of uh, you know their their movies, and which obviously uh, yeah, made the movies longer. So that's probably another reason why. It's, it's another good point to make, too, because I, I've got to point out that at least 15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes, um, could even be longer than that. But I'll approximate that at least 15 or 20 minutes of this movie, if you include at least the opening and closing credits sequence, that it, it was music videos. Um, and they were awesome parts of this movie, too. It, it wasn't like it was boring music videos. They were really fantastic scenes of this movie that were just like music videos that were explaining parts of this movie um such as the scenes that were dedicated to amir khan's character rancho talking about how all is well that was a big phrase of the film that they had an entire song dedicated to of him saying all is well that turned into a whole music video sequence um his relationship 
Yeah, it saved a child that was born. <laughs> um, his relationship <laughs> um, with Karina Kapoor's character. Um, that was a giant music video sequence. Um, and there's more of them uh, that I won't go into, but it was just mind-blowing when I was watching this movie and I would get sucked in and then all of a sudden it would turn into a music video. And immediately, that just made me happy to see because I'm watching this movie and then all of a sudden I get sucked into this music video sequence. And I want to say it felt almost like I was watching like MTV um, which uh, I can't say that MTV is like the most blissful feeling, but I gotta say it's like it's like a music video experience, it's like VH1. And yeah, 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 VH1. We'll say VH1. <laughs> oh, it, it was just so nice. It was just it made me feel so happy to see these music videos come on, and then I would get put back into the movie of a moving plot line, and it was just so such a nice feeling. And I I didn't even care that the movie was three hours long at that point. I'm just like, great. I'm like going into this music video, and then I come back out to this nice moving story, and I'm back in a music video, and it was just like this nice like ease of relaxation i felt when i was put into the music videos this movie felt so good and for those who haven't seen three idiots uh one please go watch it it's on amazon prime uh if you're an amazon prime member you can watch it for free uh if not it's worth the rental uh but to get into a little bit of the plot uh so you get some context if you're interested in this movie it starts off In 1999, students Farhan and Raju of the Imperial College of Engineering in Delhi struggle to compete within its cutthroat academic culture. Farhan is passionate about wildlife photography, but chose to join in order to appease his father, while Raju is in need of a career that will extricate his family from poverty. Their roommate, the eccentric Rancho, who is generally passionate about engineering, gives unorthodox answers in class and frequently clashes with the ICE or ICE instructor um, Vero, who is also known as a virus, uh, since he believes that students should enjoy that what they learn despite their strict teaching model. And what really the first like, oh, made me think. And also, oh, this is also a funny scene, uh, which I there was a lot of I can't really describe it more than that. It's like, oh, I'm really thinking about this. Also, this is really funny. Was the pen, the pen when he was talking, uh, virus was talking about the pen and the ballpoint pen. And then Rancho basically said like, uh, why is this basically, why is this such a great invention? People could just use pencils in space. Oh, that was (laughs) funny. It was great. It was like, boom, boomer. Anyway, (laughs) I think, I think Amir Khan's actually boomer, but whatever. Um, but anyway, it was, you know, kind of like showing, hey, why don't we encourage critical thinking with our youth and and encourage them to be better than us? You know, it, this is we aren't the end all be all of knowledge. And it was so cool. And the way he said it too, what I really enjoyed is that he had such like an innocence on his face, too. It wasn't like the way I just did. It was like spiteful. But like he. He did it in a way and throughout the movie, too, whenever he's really like showing someone up was and that's why people end up loving him um, and also almost kind of hate themselves for hating him because he does it in a way that's not to compete. He does it in a way to help other people. And that's what's so endearing about his character, about Rancho. Uh, And what's interesting is that he's as we find out later, he's living a whole life for someone else not even for himself because it's not even his real name he's what right guys uh adam and rashawn he's actually living this life to get a degree for like this this rich guy that he was helping his family out and his real name is um and please help me out uh it's um pun suk uh wangdu wangdu yeah Yeah. and that's his real identity yeah yeah, and, and, and I think that name was not it was meant to be a little complicated, and I guess it was it was also like a plot twist at the end. So yeah, um, <laughs> spoilers, <it's> just, <laughs> right? No, so, we don't care um, about spoilers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I want to make sure I don't like you know give the whole story plot out here. But oh, go um, for it! Our can. listeners are used to it yeah. by now. <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I do want to point out that you know when I first um, when I first moved to the states and you know went to grad school, I was at the UI. Um, I had people from all, all different parts of the world. There were people from South America, Europe, and Asia, Indonesia, and really like you know people would ask like where are you from and whatnot. Um, and I'm, I'm not even exaggerating this. 
uh, people would literally ask me like, oh, where are you from? And I'd be like, I'm from India. Oh, did you watch Three Idiots? And I'm like, <laughs> really? Like, that's the first thing that comes like, not like Taj Mahal or like, I don't know, like Gandhi or there's so many things. Like, yeah. they're like, oh, did you, have you seen Three Idiots? That movie is amazing. And I was like, I did not know this movie was so popular worldwide, except the US, I guess. Uh, you know, everyone's talking about it. Um, but, but what's interesting is like that movie deals with, um, with a real issue. Like, you know, that's something that I, um, I was exposed to. Like, I mean, you know, my parents always said like, yeah, you want to, you should be an engineer. And I became an engineer. Like, not, I didn't really have a, a, a lot of different choices out there. Like, it's, it's not really what you want to do. It's about, well, you have to succeed and you have to work hard. There are no other options here. And it's a race. Your life is a race. You want to win. You have to be competitive. And that's literally like the mantra. And that's that's what everyone's been doing. And that's what they've been, that's what they're still doing till date. And, and it turns out it's not only India. It's apparently a lot of different parts of the world. And uh, which is why I see how they can relate to this movie. I wanted to ask about the the realism about that, considering this movie is a satire about the social pressures under an Indian education system. I was curious how much uh, the realism is uh, in that, uh, like how how the Indian education system is like that. Like that was that was really how the Indian education system was like there was that much uh, in terms of like learning engineering in India and things like that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So when I you know, when I came to grad school here, there's uh, the whole schooling I realized the major difference in how education uh, system is set up here is, you know, it's 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 an experience versus uh, versus over there. It's it's more about, uh, you know, how do you score well? How do you you know how do you uh, compete? How do you get a better rank? And you do whatever you can. And and I still remember like, you know. When I talk to my friends here, people talk about going to colleges as like an exciting thing. They have a life, they do things, they, you know, they go to parties and things like that. That was not an option for me. And this is me real time. I went through that experience. I, I went to an engineering college. All I had to do was work hard, slog my ass 24 seven. And only because it was, it, it's really hard to clear exams. Not in, I'm not even talking about getting good scores. It's really hard to even clear exams. Um, and once you do, then it's like, well, you also have to score really well because there are other people who are scoring better than you. Um, and um, so my, my day would literally start, you know, going to college. And then after college, you know, the entire day of college, I would then go to like a coaching where I would try and get additional skills, hopefully, and learn something more. And it's just the entire process is just like, you know, study, work hard, learn, learn, learn. And it's like, you know, all work, no play. You literally are in you know heads down just you don't think about anything else you really don't have a life and then and, and, and they hit the nail right on the head uh, there's a like suicide is a big problem like uh, i i personally know people who committed suicide which which is really sad but it is it is how the system is set up and it's it's a major major flaw wow that is I, that, that is rough i i not to say I, I like that that's happening, but when it comes to this story, I, especially comedies, I love it when comedies deal with real stuff in real life that's can that people can connect to like this. It is refreshing that it's because the comedy means something, you know, it, it means like something real and it means freedom from. Uh, even if it's temporary from these pressures or this stress or this weight that one feels. And I believe really that uh, Amir Khan and, and his buddies, uh, Farhan Raju, especially during the songs that I love so much and all the dances, were really trying to lift people from that. I mean, right. they have that uh, uh, all is well dance sequence soon after the the suicide that we do see the well the i should say 
the completed suicide because as we see later raju attempts suicide uh granted he survives but after the first one that we see it's really soon after that that we see a s- no i take that back it's actually right before it's right before because i remember the the dance ended as they were running to find their classmate and then f- his funeral follows wow uh never mind i take that back uh i realized that was happening right before but even so it it shows further that there's something there's something wrong with the system and i didn't I had not thought of that, that about that much before this before this movie. And it's really embarrassing <laughs> this country man like it's really embarrassing how this in a in America where movies are so big and and the economy really does uh heighten so much through uh Hollywood that this movie isn't praised enough. I mean, granted Steven Spielberg really liked it, which also I had never even heard of Steven Spielberg talk about this film movie. Um but in 2013 uh, Spielberg praised Three Idiots, which he had seen three times, and he said he loved the emotional undertones. He listed it as one of five films that he connects with, along with The Godfather and his own work, E.T., The Extraterrestrial, Saving Private Ryan, and Jaws. <laughs> I love that, Just like, comparing it to his own stuff? I love it. Like, I love, I love it my like own my own work. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's like a mother saying that she loves this child like her own children. Uh, but, uh, but hey, Spielberg loves it just as much as he loves his own own film so narcissistic <laughs> uh he says he just has a lot of self-love you know but he in three idiots is included in that so that's nice to hear and um but as we go on what i really liked was the juxtaposition of these i mean really it's yes three idiots three these three friends uh farhan rancho and raju but really Pia, I like to include in that as well, because in the, in the flash forward in the future where it's 10 years later, it, it and it ends really with those four all together again, because they all share that connection. And Pia is daughter of the daughter of the virus and uh, <laughs> who does come around in the end, which I was really glad because I was like, oh, dude, yeah. you know why you're pushing people to suicide? Why are you doing? No, why are you doing this? I was so mad at him the whole time. But then he finally he breaks down his own and i gotta say there was a little bit of toxic masculinity i think that he like he got over himself in his own like burst like explosive way when he was like you don't have to be right about everything he shakes the pen and and, uh amir khan and he he slips it in his shirt and that was like his like his his blessing to him and and it was it was so beautiful and i loved it and it was right after they (laughs) they deliver i never heard of this before they deliver a baby using a vacuum i had never heard of that either have you i was so impressed by the way they set that up though like it was she's so doing good. it yeah, via webcam and like they yeah. had no electricity and then it's like all right let's rig this all up get with a car battery and all of this the, like yeah, me battery. seeing all of that i was like damn i would have so never good. had the knowledge to do this oh. even if i had someone talking to me through it i'd be like uh what <laughs> and I, I thought the baby, like, I really thought they were going to leave the baby dead. I really, I really thought I thought so, that. too. I was At worried. First I was like, this, they just get, like, some baby doll that's, like, just not moving. Like, oh, it's a baby. You know, like, oh, it's just a baby doll. It's not moving. Like, oh, no, it's dead. And then everybody's crying. And I started, like, tears were starting to come to my eyes. I'm like, oh, no. And then all is well. Just, like, it, it was kicking inside the, its mother's womb. And that's, they all started, like, chanting it. And then the baby came back to life. And I. I was I was I was weeping I was in it I was feeling it it was it was beautiful it was great and then yeah and then finally Amir Khan well Rancho gets the approval from the virus uh, <laughs> yeah and, and, and what a name very, uh, honest like, when I first saw the movie that was not my favorite part in the movie because I, I really thought of it as you know a comedy movie and that this was the part that was not a lot of or not a lot of comedy movies so um, when I when I was telling my fiance, I was like, you know, there's this part where they deliver the baby. I'm not really a big fan of that scene. Um, and she was like, okay, you know, whatever, we'll watch it. And we watched it. And she and she was like, this is really the best part of the movie. <laughs> you, you didn't get it. And it, and, and and it's all. And, and then she explained it to me, which which makes sense. Is is like throughout, you know, they go through this is four years of getting a degree and 
finally, this is when they actually put it in practice. And that's what they show at Rancho, really using his expertise and putting things together. And they work together as a team. And, and that's kind of what they're trying to show. And so there's, you know, there's depth to, to the movie. You're not just thinking comedy. You're not just thinking characters. They're, they're trying to explain something, which I was mind blown. And I was like, well, this is the third time I'm watching it. I just realized that was the thing. This, this movie is deep. <laughs> yeah, I know. I want to revisit it for sure. And I will say also, this is less to do with the plot and more about where they filmed, uh, especially in the future. It was it was just beautiful, like where yeah. they film. What what mountain range was that? Was it? It's, it's the Himalayas. Himalayas, that's what I thought. Himalayas. Yeah, yeah, Himalayas. I mean, it's major majorly in India, and uh, you know, there's uh, I there's, there's this region called Leh and Ladakh, which uh, which is to the north uh, northeast uh, of uh, Himalayas. I guess going towards Tibet and uh, China, um, but. Uh, that that spot is very very popular like you'll have uh, people doing like 20 30 day bike ride like taking cruiser bikes and just going on a road trip um and they you know bike all the way uh all the way to uh it's close to Kashmir, but yeah to lay in ladakh so no, it, is, it. it is that'd be a very long bike ride yeah <laughs> oh I, i'd be up for it i would love to do that it's it just it just looked so Gorgeous. And I will say, and this is a knock on a movie that we reviewed in the past. Actually, I think it was our very first episode, Extraction. And this is not just a knock on that movie, but movies like that, that I get so mad at that I realized not until after we reviewed Extraction is that they use that stupid yellow filter. And they, oh, yeah. A lot of filmmakers do that to, like, like our former ex president Trump used to say, uh, and again, it's just his words, shithole countries, which I fucking hate it when they try to make something like, you know, maybe areas of different countries like may not have as much money. So they put a yellow filter on it to make it look like, oh, this is so bad. And like, you know, it's grungy and toxic whatever it's like no 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 that's actually racist and it's bad and it's like it's it there it's beautiful there too it's it's more beautiful there than here and it's like why are why are these american filmmakers making other countries like this like that that i mean basically aren't the countries that aren't white countries look like that it's like no let's show it in this like for what it is for the beauty that it is and that's why like i like really want people to watch three idiots and more movies like this also amir khan I, i'm just i got a little bro crush bro crush on him now and i think he's i think he's awesome I think it's so cool. I'm totally uh, want to watch more of them, like I said. And I just, as I was watching this, I realized like how much I've been like programmed by that too. Granted, I, I've, I've never like fed into it. Like, oh, this is the way it, this is the way it looks or whatever. Because like, I've never been to India before. And I have, the movies I've watched have, I realized like, when that image came into my head, I'm like, oh, this isn't because I've been there. This is because of the movies that have made other places like that look like that because it was systematic. And I just, it was so, <laughs> I feel, I, I feel like I could have like said this on my own earlier, but I feel like this is something that people who are totally in that mindset are like, no, it always looks yellow <laughs> that they will, could watch this. And I can think of like 20 people in my hometown back in Ohio that I would love to show this and be like, look, assholes. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's there It's not too. yellow. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's why that's what basically what it comes down to. It's like, I want to show the ignorant assholes of America and be like, look, assholes. It's gorgeous there. <laughs> so yeah, no, that's not that's, using the yellow filter. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's always been a thing. Like when we watch Bollywood movies, we were like, yeah, there's and and, and not to take away, the fact that you know there's problems this there's actual social issues is you know there's poverty in parts but when we watched bollywood movies you see the reality there's good parts and there's bad parts and we watched hollywood movies there's only bad parts and yeah. we always were like why why do why do they show us this for all the time i get it this poverty and it is a real problem i get it but it was always shown with like one lens and there's a lot of stereotyping and it's not just like with uh, with, with the location it's it's also with people like mm -hmm. I still remember like a lot of my friends would be you know here would be like oh that this person's too white to be an Indian and I was like have you seen Indian people really uh, like like you know that there are actually like whiter than white people who live in India and you know a, a lot of them in Bollywood and a lot of them 
have actually said they, they came to Hollywood and were just denied because they're too white to be Indian. Um, which, you know, because the stereotype is Kelly Kapoor from The Office, I guess. Which, again, it's it's a range of people. It's a range of skin color. You cannot just say, oh, this is how a person from this part of the world looks and this is what I'm going to present them as. Uh, which, you know, and then obviously people exposed to that are going to ex- have a certain expectation of how, how the, this part of the world looks or how people are and are completely taken away when they see the reality so like sofia vergara in modern family uh they made her dye her hair black because sofia vergara is from latin america but she is naturally blonde and they're they're like yeah 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 yeah. but your character is also from latin america and americans think of all everybody from latin america having dark skin and dark hair and it's like but she's like Ugh. i'm naturally blonde though <laughs> and they're like yeah whatever you're gonna dye your hair black so yeah, exactly. It's just aye, it's aye, like aye. It's, just, it's systematic. It's systematic. It's 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 keeping people in check, and it and it's just kind of like when you when you realize more and more of that. At least for me, it's like oh wow, this thing I love so much, TV and movies. It's like oh even that has it, and and I'm like ah oh, get off of me, systematic racism, and yeah, it's um. Yep, there's bad places and there's great places everywhere in the world, and it sucks when only the bad parts or the people that you know maybe poor are only shown to uh, Americans, which, in all reality, for the most part, uh, don't get out much. Uh, you know, mean compared to other countries, uh, there is a lot of people definitely who travel a lot for sure, but there's a lot of mid America who haven't been many places in the world, yeah. and that is really their only window to that. So it's like, if that's our only window, can we show? variety can we show what it's really like what people are really like what it actually is so yeah uh you know that's why we're here you know guys we're we're here talking about you know we're trying to (laughs) reach out to reach out and touch someone and (laughs) show show the real world more of the world (laughs) exactly (laughs) um but yeah uh hey rashawn uh could you talk just a little bit more of the uh, the plot um after basically could you just kind of wrap up with the way it ends for us to give a little more context to our listeners who haven't seen this yeah so i i I think and, and, and that's a, that's a key difference in between the book and, and the movie. The movie is not a direct like you know, carbon copy of, of the book. They've they've done a lot of different parts, uh, and and ending is one of the different parts, which is not really in the book. The book was mostly about three guys. I I, I think what's really fascinating is you know they they show Amir Khan's character as like someone who's really smart who doesn't really care about you know getting a good score. Although he always ends up, you know, <laughs> ranking first, but at, at the end of the day, his his whole passion is is you know knowledge and teaching people and teaching kids and actually enjoying that and I uh, and how the movie ended, I think really, I, I think that just summed it up as you know that at, at when the movie is about to end and you see Amir Khan's character and again the spoilers here, but uh, you know Amir Khan's character just teaching kids. And you think about, well, you know, at the end of the day, he didn't really do that well. You know, he's, he's just teaching kids or whatever. You know, he's, um, I guess, for our definition of what, what success really means is, I guess, translates to some sort of wealthy person. And, and you automatically, in your mind, you, you're like, well, he, he probably did okay, but, you know, he's doing good things or whatever. But it turns out he actually <laughs> was really wealthy and, you know, and was, 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 Really, really. Imp- I don't want to don't want to give it give away too much, but it was really important to the to the plot and to all the characters. So, uh, which which is a lesson, right? Like at the end of the day, he he said it well. Like you don't you don't chase money or you don't chase success. Like you 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 go after knowledge. You go after skill, and and everything else will chase you. Was it follow and, excellence and success will follow? Yeah. Right? Yeah, so that's beautiful. I think, yeah, that's. I think that's. I loved it. I. I. Yeah. I. <laughs> I was smiling through the majority of this film, uh, if not a little weepy, and also the romance between uh, Rancho and Pia was just beautiful as well. I loved all their scenes together. I thought they had great chemistry. Also, 
I love I love the scene where they threaten the quote unquote real Rancho with his dad's ashes. Yeah. They're gonna flush it down the toilet. And they grabbed the wrong jar. Yeah, they, they grabbed they grabbed an empty urn. And they, but and they realize, oh, we could have got shot from that. And uh and then they tie up their friend um who was the character I forget, the the rich one that was like yeah. Uh, like, oh, I'm so rich. I'm the successful Chateau, one. I, the silencer. Yeah, the silencer, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The silencer. And and they tied him up and put him in the trunk. And it's like I like I that, that he was he called like, the silencer and he had like silent farts that would like <laughs> just make everyone Yeah. Yes. Not, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and there was that scene where he, like, starts honking real bad. And they're like, well, there are no cars. Why are you honking? Did, did you fart right now? Like, what are you, <laughs> is that why? <laughs> that so... scene where he's giving the speech. Oh, that was, was awesome. The, it was in the uh, earlier, yeah, the yes, college yeah. days. What, what, okay, I, I was a little confused. So I know that they... It was right. It was uh, Rancho and Farhan and Raju who changed the speech. Right. right. I'm curious. Why did uh, Chatur uh, go with it? Yeah, I mean, like when he realized that he would get in trouble by doing all these th- this yeah, puns that, and jokes. That, that's a good question. So that that's the whole point about his character is that he does not care about actually understanding what they're you know any anything like be it book speed any text. He's gonna rope learn it. He's gonna memorize it, and he's gonna just <laughs> vomit it. Uh, and that's how he got scored good marks. Like in any exam, he's just gonna memorize the definition. Like he's gonna repeat it to himself ten times, and just gonna like vomit. Uh, and that's basically what he did. Like the definition I mean, of the machine. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, they did show that he he didn't did not know Hindi or had he spoke very broken Hindi. And 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 I, I really missed like you know if, if you knew hindi this the movie's even funnier because the grammar and and things he's and his pronunciations they they're just like real funny and they, they make it funny but like it's it's just like this character who is trying to trying to be smart in hindi but does not know hindi at all because he's just like <laughs> memorized a few words uh and, and and that's why he did not know what these words mean uh he did, does not know hindi very well <laughs> and he just memorized it and Said it. That makes much more sense. (laughs) That makes sense now. Thank you for that. (laughs) I loved it. It was was so good. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, I have a a little bit more uh, factoids, but I mean, I think the audience pretty much gets how I feel about this. Um, And I will say that the film's rating on Rotten Tomatoes was a... While you're looking 100%. For that. Sorry, 100%. <laughs> it's 100% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes based on that's 13 great. reviews with an average score of 7.44 out of 10. Yep, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Sorry, Rashawn, what were you going to say? No, I was, I was going to say, uh, I wanted to ask uh, if you guys had to pick a scene. Like, what scene was your favorite in the entire movie? Adam? I mean, the, the movie was great, but, you know, if you had to pick one of them. Yeah. Adam, do you want to go first? I should have kept a uh, better track of all of the scenes in this movie because <laughs> they were all so, so good. Um, it really caught my attention in the beginning, though. I just can't forget when they first introduced Amir Khan's character and he set up that spoon, that, the electric spoon that the guy peed on <laughs> when they first introduced his character. With, uh, with Vi- oh, yeah. 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 Well, that was, uh, was that the silencer? The guy- no, no, a silencer was in it. He was trying to be like James Bond or whatever. Uh, James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> da, na, na, na. It was introducing Amir Khan's character and all the freshmen at the school and how they all got introduced to the school and Amir Khan's character is Rancho. Yeah, he was <laughs> denying being hazed and they were like, no, you have to pull down your pants. And then he set up, like he rigged that spoon to be like electric if it got peed on. And so he shocked the dude who peed on the spoon. Right in his wiener. It's yeah. Salt water, oh. baby. <laughs> it, and it is, it is a very common thing actually in India. Like I, I know like, uh, you know, frat boys do that kind of thing over here. Like, you know, hazing is, is, is kind of common. But, like, in over there, it's, like, every time, like, uh, you know, there's a new batch of students that's entered college, they're going to be hazed. They call them ragging over there. Ragging. Say it's more colloquial over there. But, like, hey, like, that's really common. Like, no matter what college you're in, 
um, like most likely the fourth year students are gonna are gonna they call it ragging and they'll be like yeah it's, it's your turn guys like you're gonna take off your pants or do something do something really stupid and they, they make you do that it's it's very common so <laughs> that that scene was that scene was apt <laughs> excellent um just a, a few notes on some facts i have on what happened after the release um a tamil and correct me if this is wrong uh, a tamil language remake entitled non non ban was released in 2012 is that true uh apparently I, yeah i haven't seen that movie but i, I believe it Excellent. And a Spanish language Mexican remake named Three, or I guess it'd be Trace Idiantes, was released in 2017. And when Three Idiots made its television debut in July 2010, it drew an audience of 39 million viewers in India. And when Three Idiots released in China, the country was only the 15th largest film market, partly due to China's widespread uh, pirate DVD distribution at the time, uh, which we kind of talked a little bit about when we reviewed Dongle. Um, however, it was the pirate market that introduced Three Idiots to most Chinese audiences, becoming a cult film in the country. Amir Khan uh, gained a large growing Chinese fan base as a result. By 2013, China grew to become the world's second largest film market after the United States, paving the way for Amir Khan's Chinese box office success with, is it DHOOM3? Uh, Doom 3, yes. Doom 3. Yes, 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 yes. And it was in 2013, PK 2014, Dongle, as we reviewed, 2016, and Secret Superstar 2017. And Three Idiots has been ranked China's 12th favorite film of all time, according to ratings on popular Chinese film review sites, such as Dubin, with only one domestic Chinese film, which is Farewell My Concubine, ranked higher. The film holds an average rating of 9.2 out of 10 on Dubin, with over 1.15 million votes on the korean site navir audiences gave the film an average rating of 9.4 out of 10 and is one of the top 30 highest rated films on the site so people love this movie yes yes they they should as they should and um also rashawn correct me if i'm wrong about this I looked up that when asked about plans of a three idiot sequel in an interview with Hindu Sun Times screenwriter Abhijit Josh, Joshi, Joshi, yeah, Joshi replied saying, "Honestly, I don't know. We have an idea for the three idiot sequel, a Muna by Part Three, but also for a PK sequel. But the PK and Muna by sequels interest me the most. So I think the three idiot sequel may happen in the future. But these two." I really want to work on. So the director, uh, Rajkumar Hirani and actor Amir Khan confirmed that they were considering a three idiot sequel. And Khan told reporters that Raju Hirani has given me a hint about three idiot sequel. And I am giving you all a hint. The film will happen if and whenever he will write the script. So that's exciting. I don't know what it would be about, but I'll watch it. So because <laughs> it seemed like to me that the story was pretty concluded do you guys think or do you think there was some things that was like oh i would you know some yeah i don't know like what else like would go on from there i mean they seem pretty much like they wrapped everything up i don't know what else the three of them would go on to do yeah um, yeah i i agree i think uh the the director is, is very popular rajkumar hirani and the other two movies they referenced uh munabai and bbs uh i think that was his first like uh, large-scale movie and that we did really well. And it had the same similar actors, not Amir Khan, but uh, Boma Narani was also, again, a college dean. And he did a really good job. Really, really funny. Uh, and they did a part two for that, which, again, was a good movie. But I don't think it did really that well. Uh, it was, again, a box office success. But it was not the same like masterpiece that the first one was. So I... I would be really surprised if they make a sequel to this guy because it's it's, it's a classic part. It's, it's, it's perfect. 
Yeah, it's perfect. It's so good. Well, that brings us to our slurps up, slurps down section, which we've been saying pretty much what our opinion is the whole time, but we will go <laughs> ahead and place a stamp on it. So this is a time where we uh, we give it a rating. Uh, slurps up means we lo- love the movie and we recommend it. Slurps down means we don't like it and we don't recommend it. And we can also say our many shades in between if they vary. Uh, but this is our time to give our final thoughts on Three Idiots. Adam, would you like to start us off please okay well this is one of the few times for any film for that matter that i will say uh it's very hard for me to say that uh i i can't say i can see any sort of a flaw in this film uh in my mind for that matter uh watching this movie from start to finish there are so many spots in this movie where things just shift gears in such a positive way that I did not feel bored at all. And this is a long movie uh, to many people, uh, three hours long. I mean, standard uh, movie length for a lot of people is about an hour and a half, maybe a little bit longer. So this is about twice the length of a normal film for many people, but it does not feel long by any means. I mean, I sat through the entire thing without taking a break and I felt great. I felt like the movie was always shifting things in a very stylistically positive way and it was wonderful uh one example is when they went to the character raju's family's home and immediately changed the style to what they called a classic 1950s black and white film (laughs) they compared it to an old 1950s black and white film totally unexpected and awesome uh another example as i was talking about before is when they would show music videos throughout the film uh not too many not too few i thought it was awesome that they did that they also had variations of comedy and drama mixed at just the right variety throughout the film i felt where one moment you're laughing and the next moment you're feeling incredibly depressed but not too much to want to stop watching the movie it's just that kind of variation in a movie that i felt like i was getting just the right amount of entertainment on both sides of the spectrum i felt like all of the characters in this movie were very relatable i uh i i'm not one uh coming from india uh like rashan so i i don't exactly know what it was like to be raised in india and i'm very grateful that uh we got to speak with rashan today about uh how the relatability is in india um but i think uh, that is definitely the the greatest thing to take away from this movie is that this movie is a relatable film and that uh it's so very real and still very humorous um it's just it's just an amazing film it's 100 percent an amazing film and like i said at the very beginning of our episode today it's definitely one of the best movies i've probably ever seen and uh it's not something i say about all the movies i watch uh i feel like this movie is very special and i definitely gonna give this movie a slurps up Excellent. I'm going to alley-oop Adam there, and I will also um, repeat some of that and say I'm very grateful we got to speak with you, Rashawn, and have your perspective in this. I think it adds uh, a lot of illumination to this for sure, Uh, and it's uh, so... Um, cause Adam and I, yeah, we didn't grow up in India and we did, we were not from there and it's, I'm so glad that we got to hear your voice and your side on this and your experience of actually seeing the movie in the theater when it came out. And I will also, um, add to you that I, I think this film is just such a positive and enriching, exciting, hilarious, uh, good feeling film that's just beautiful from start to end and yeah it's long but boy it doesn't feel like that it it feels like this lifelong adventure that doesn't feel like it's lifelong it feels like it's your life and you're just sort of going along the the ride and it's just it's like okay where we're gonna go next and i love the way they tell the two stories in the future and in the past um, so well, because not that's a tricky thing to do if you don't, you know, have, you know, like this is the year, you know, subtitles like this is 2019, this is 2009, whatever. It doesn't work very well for many different films, but you, if you do it right, it, it feels really good, like the way they did it here. And the differences were subtle, just subtle enough, you know, we didn't need to see them with like gray hair or whatever, you know, it was just, just like a pair of glasses or a mustache or a little bit longer hair. And it was, it just added just, just enough of like how someone can like change or not change uh, within 10 years. And it was, 
I mean, that's just a little bit to say. I love the romance in this. I love the dancing. I love the singing. I love the comedy. I love the real life um, issues that it was talking about. The characters were so heartfelt. Whenever they tear up, it seemed it felt genuine. You know, like some some films, like I see people crying. And I'm like, you're not crying. Like you're not really actually in this. You know, I like criticize actors for that. <laughs> and but this, it felt like it also felt like dudes were able to express their feelings well in this you know like we don't usually see that either here in american movies we we see, you see the dude like just like i'm just tough whatever you know a fist bump dude fist up bro and like they were like giving each other hugs kissing each other on the head top of the head and they were like very you know they're buddies they were very you know affectionate buddies and it was it was it was just like it was just pure love. I'll just say that this three idiots is just fucking pure, pure love, pure love and beauty. I loved it so much. And uh, I will say that I give it a forever to the next universe slurps up. That's how up it goes up out into the next universe slurps up for myself. Roshan, what is your slurps up slurps down verdict? My friend. Yeah, I was, I was, trying to think about how I should explain this. <laughs> um, you know, when when the colonizers uh, left Europe to find a new world, and, you know, famously Christopher Columbus landed in the long, wrong spot and called it India, uh, one of the things that they really were looking for was spices. Uh, and that's something that we Indians, like, cherish. Like, we really, really love our spices. Uh, and when you mix the spices together, and, and I don't know if you guys have tried Indian food, there's usually a lot of spices. This mix of spices, depth of spices. It's called masala. And I'm sure you guys have heard of that word before. Mm -hmm. um, so and, and, this is, and, and this is what um, in, in India is what you call a masala movie. It's got, it's got comedy. It's got emotion. It's got songs. It's got music. It's it's something that a you know a family could go and enjoy. It's something that you know kids can watch. It's something that uh, young people can go watch. Um, it's it's a masala flick, and, uh, and 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 that's that's how that's that's like the definition of success in Bollywood. If you made a masala movie, you're going to be successful. Um, and, and all their spices are right, and depth of spices are correct. You're going to be successful. So, um, and, and then that's really what, what Three Idiots is. Uh, they, you know, I and like I said, I, I thought I was not a good enough audience or a smart enough audience for the movie. Like the the movie didn't deserve me as as someone, you know, like watching the movie the first time because I was fixated on comedy and I was like, I don't like this part because this is not funny enough. But I was not smart enough to actually like think about it from a different perspective and in this this depth in the movie and this depth in the direction uh, and this this uh, and, and I think uh, one of the things that really gets overlooked is is also uh, acting and I want to say Oma Narani I really love that dude he he he's done a lot of different movies and he acts really well so um, and it's it's something if people ever come across his movies I, I would totally recommend uh, Oma Narani as an actor he's, he's a really good actor um, so yeah, it's all in all, it's a great masala flick. It's a great movie. Um, all the spices were great. Uh, it's, it's a dish I would, I would definitely eat. And if it's a drink, I would definitely slurp. <laughs> it's a slurp up for me. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Slurp up. I love that. I love what, how do you pronounce it again? Masala? Masala. Masala. Uh, M-A-S-A-L-A. So masala. Yeah. You might have, yeah, you might have heard of like, uh, like tandoori masala or chicken tikka masala or yes, yeah, you know, paneer tikka masala, things like that. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. It's I on the menu now. It with films, <laughs> that's so cool. Those are the best kind of films. Wow, that's amazing. Go check out Three Idiots, everyone, who are all of you listeners out there. Yes, please. Yeah, rent it off iTunes, uh, borrow a DVD, I guess, from the Chinese market. Check this it morning. out on Amazon Prime right now. That is, yes, if you were a member on that, it is for free. That's how I watched it. So please go check it out. You will do yourself a favor. It is an amazing, just heartwarming, beautiful film. Go check it out. Three Idiots. Well, 
with that said, thanks everyone for listening to our review of Three Idiots. Now it's our solo plug time. That's right. It's when we plug stuff that we do besides screen slurps. Um, that's right. We like doing this, but we also like doing other things too. So we would like you to please check it out. So plug for me is that I stream on Twitch. That's right. I play video games and I do other th- fun things on my channel. So follow me at twitch.tv forward slash dash jhart. That's twitch.tv forward slash d-a-s-h j-a-y h-a-r-t i'm also on instagram and twitter um that tag is dash gearhart my last name d-a-s-h-g-i-e-r-h-a-r-t i also am prepping a twitch actual play DD game coming up soon placed in the eberron world which is an arcana punk dungeons and dragons world so check that out and we uh, will hopefully be launching sometime in march uh, we'll see how things go the latest april and yeah that'll be on twitch it's called journey punks and it'll be uploaded to youtube and podcast platforms so moving on adam what would you like to solo plug my friend I'm on Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud at Adam Meisner. I'm also on Twitch at forward slash A Meisner. And I play music. I put up originals. I put up covers. I put up whatever you want me to put up. You just let me know. And I will probably just put it up. I like to just play music. So just let me know what you want to hear. And I will uh, I'll put it up. Adam, I got a request. Before I make a request, I would like to ask Rashawn if you'd like to plug anything, sir. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not as talented as these two other fellow idiots. Uh, <laughs> not, uh, oh, yeah, we're idiots. <laughs> but, <laughs> all is all well. well. All is well. Uh, I, I'm on Instagram. Uh, it's follow.rosh, R-O-S-H. So follow.rosh um, if you want to check me out. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Excellent. Cool. So – a request for Mr. Meisner is I'd like you to cover the opening to Boy Meets World. What is the cover to Boy Meets World? <laughs> I would like you to cover Faith by George Michael. Oh, that's that's not a bad one. I could actually play that on the guitar too. Um, but I don't know. Right now. Well, right now. <laughs> Well, I guess it would be nice if I could touch your body. I know not everybody has got a body like you. But I gotta think twice there you before go. I give my heart away. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all you get. <laughs> Drive me down to level boy blues. Oh, this river. That wraps up for this episode of Screen Slips, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for listening. And please be sure to like us, follow us on social media. We release new episodes every Monday on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and just about everywhere you can find podcasts on the internet. And please be sure to follow us and subscribe to us on those platforms. And if you like our show, please give us a nice five star review in the Apple Podcast app. And please recommend us to everyone in your multiverse. It will help the show grow and stay on the lookout for our Patreon page launching soon. So closing out, this is Dash Gearheart. And I'm Adam Meisner. And our special guest, Sean Pajari. Slurps up and we'll catch you all later.